Today I'm in northwestern Pennsylvania on the campus of Edinburgh University. And yeah, that was a banjo. I'm gonna play banjo uh, this weekend with the Erie Philharmonic, so let's go. things that come in handy. Definitely a pencil, earplugs in an orchestra, especially if you're sitting in front of the brass. And for guitar players, a felt pick. If you've never used one of these, it's coming really handy, especially when they start telling you you're too loud. With, you know, a banjo is a very big possibility. First rehearsal went really well. I didn't have the conductor have to single me out and mention anything, so that's always a compliment, and that's what you want, really. Um, figured this might be a good opportunity for video, just talking about uh, how I get by playing fretted instruments in a symphony, how I got into it. I started as a violist. Um, I'll get into the whole story later, and just in general, my thoughts on uh, being a symphony musician as a guitarist. Day two, I've got some downtime this morning, so I brought along my Eastman to do some practicing and also uh, my computer, keyboard, and finale. I've been writing a ton of music in finale lately, getting ready for my master's recital in about two weeks. Uh, my room here, nice view on the bay of Lake Erie. Yeah, I've got a rehearsal at three o'clock uh, and then the concert later tonight. I mentioned a felt pick the other day. I did end up using that on the concert versus the standard Dunlop 205 that I normally use. Uh, and that has to do with the fact that this banjo has a resonator and it's very, very loud. It can be kind of bombastic in an orchestra as pretty much all fretted instruments can be. So the standard pick. The felt pick. Just a little bit more mild sound, a little bit warmer helps to blend with the orchestra a little bit and not jump out so much. I could have taken the resonator off. Um, I've done that once and it seems like the wood is almost stripped, so I'm not trying to test that. I just preferred to use a felt pick and I felt like that balanced pretty well with the orchestra. All right, day two, another rehearsal right now. It's like 3 p.m. ish. Uh, and then the concert tonight is actually free, open to the public. Last service is going to be tomorrow at the Warren Theater downtown Erie, and that's a recording session. I thought I'd also talk about pay scale for orchestra gigs. Uh, basically, there's two designations when you're in an orchestra. There's either a section chair, which would include anyone sitting in the violin section, viola, um, basses, etc. Then there is the soloist chairs. So that would be clarinet one, clarinet two, flute. Uh, myself in this case today, banjo. Um, percussion also is included, even though there can be anywhere from like three to seven percussionists for a given gig. Um, now there's also section leaders. So if you're the first chair uh, section leader, then you're basically getting soloist chair pay. Um, of course, everything's up for negotiation. A lot of times budgets can be pretty tight. So if you're the one trying to call the shots there, they might just find someone else. Um, the increase in pay from a solo chair versus a section chair might be around like 50% bump. Um, now, most of the orchestras in I'm talking about the small orchestras, not like Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, New York. Uh, the small regional orchestras are going to be uh, essentially like 45 bucks a service, at least in Pennsylvania. That is uh, determined by the musicians' union in the state. That is the smallest pay that you can get for 
a, a session. So a session is defined by up to three hours with a required 30 minute break in there at some point. Uh, if the session runs over, this could be a rehearsal or the actual performance, the overtime pay goes pretty high, pretty fast, and it can cost an orchestra thousands of dollars just for a few minutes over time. So like today, uh, we actually didn't even touch on a few of the movements in the symphony that I'm on. Uh, we had one rehearsal, just today's rehearsal, with the pianist that's doing the piano concerto. I'm not on that piece. Uh, then we played an Ellington symphony, and then finally the piece that I'm on. But we played my movement and I believe the first movement. Now I should also mention that in a day where you have two services, where you're required to still be there, uh, but you're not being worked for this time, you often get an allotment called a per diem. If, you're, if you've ever done like a, a, a bus tour or a van tour or something, that is a term that's, that's used quite often. A per diem in that case is often given to musicians on days off. In today's case, that would be food in between the rehearsal earlier and the performance tonight. To add on to what I mentioned about pay, there is also fee for travel. So this was a three hour gig for me to get to. Uh, we had three days worth of service. So that would be three hours there, three hours back to Johnstown for me, times three days, right? So altogether about 18 hours worth of driving. Now I chose to book a hotel room. Uh, the Erie Phil has a special discount. Uh, I got a nice room at the Sheraton right on the bay. And uh, that was worth it to me because I'm still getting pay for travel as if I'm driving to and from my home each night. However, I don't actually have to spend that money on the road. So the money that I'm earning uh, as compensation for travel, gas, wear and tear on the car, that's going towards uh, paying for the hotel room essentially. I did have one extra expense this week uh, and that is that I had to get a set of coattails, um, a white vest and a white bow tie. I've never used that for an orchestra before, although that can be pretty standard attire. Uh, pretty, probably like 90% of the time, it's what they call concert black, which is tuxedo for guys. A black bow tie, white shirt, you know, and then for women is just blacks. Depending on the symphony, they might tell you to wear long sleeves or short sleeves, whatever. Uh, other times, typically for pops concerts, which is what I end up playing guitar for on a lot when we're doing Broadway stuff or, uh, you know, pops music, not standard classical repertoire. That would be just all blacks, black shirt, black pants, all black. Tonight, I just happened to be wearing coattails. That should be a funny sight with banjo, right? They're lucky I didn't go out there with overalls. Symphony just had a great first half of the concert. They got done with the Ellington Symphony and the Piano Concerto. Now I'm gonna go get changed uh, and head on stage. I wanted to answer the question that y'all probably had by now, and that is, did I make $1,000 an hour playing a banjo? The point of titling the video is to express the reality that it is, uh, that a lot of fretted instrument players who end up playing in orchestras uh, go through, and that is that we're hired here, we get paid for the full service of the rehearsal, however, in actuality, we're on a very small segment of the program because this stuff occurs so infrequently. Um, it's more so the case that we're playing for maybe 10 minutes on the entire program. So when all said and done here, uh, we had a rehearsal yesterday, a rehearsal today, a concert, and then a recording session tomorrow. Between all that, I have definitely played just about an hour, um, and there's the reasoning for the title of the video. So I'm gonna head back in, play my five to 10 minutes or so of the concert, uh, and then maybe later I'll talk a little bit about the music to fill you in on if this is something you want to get into yourself. I thought I'd give you a brief introduction to uh, this banjo. And I'll talk about reading music a little bit later today. Well, it's day three, I've got the recording session later, so a ton of time to kill before 7 p.m. This is a 1970s K uh, that I, I picked up on Craigslist kind of accidentally. I didn't realize it was... A pretty nice banjo. I paid 50 bucks for it at the time. I actually bought it on the way to a gig uh, where I had to play banjo. Luckily it worked. I had all the strings and everything. Uh, and then I've got a Myers pickup on that, which I'm not using for this. Uh, basically, I just use that for when I play musicals. I don't claim to be an amazing banjo player by any stretch of that word. Um, let's talk about the tuning a little bit. So this is William Grant Still's Afro-American Symphony. The third movement uses banjo, and actually it's the only symphony I know of that uses banjo. You can see there's some very specific 
chord voicings here. Uh, it's actually written for a tenor banjo part of four string. I don't have a four string, so what I've done is I've tuned a plectrum tuning, which is essentially the bottom four strings of a guitar, the high four, uh, and then I've detuned a half step to be able to play some of these. These chord voicings are impossible on an open G tuning otherwise. I need a low D flat, and in that same position, I have to be able to reach a high A flat above the staff. So here I am at the Warner Theater. This is gonna be the venue for tonight's recording session. It was built in 1931 and recently renovated. It's the normal venue for the Erie Philharmonic. Uh, and it's just worked out through chance and that they've been renovating it the last few years that I've never actually been inside. Uh, in the past when I played with Erie, uh, we played at the hockey arena downtown. We're right on the main street right now, so the hockey arena is just in that direction. Uh, and last night we played at Edinburgh University, which is about 30 minutes away. So I'm excited to see the inside of this place. Just finished the session at the Warner Theater here. Let me know what you thought about the video. If you made it this far, I appreciate you watching. Uh, if you have any questions that I didn't answer, of course, leave them in the comments. I'm pretty good at getting back to people. Uh, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button, all that stuff. You can hear me. Uh, take care. I'll see you in the next video.